Hi guys, I hope you're all well and getting vaccinated and taking care of each other. I know there is some noise in the background from my swamp cooler. I live in Tucson, Arizona, so it tends to get scorching hot outside and trying to record without some form of air ventilation going kind of creates for an uncomfortable situation. So I, I kind of figured this is a casual style video. I don't think people are really going to care about the noise in the background, although I'm sure somebody's gonna complain about it. Anyways, I'm just doing a general channel update video. I can't really appear on camera because I'm rather disheveled looking. I am overdue for a massive haircut, as well as a lot of other things due to the pandemic. I just haven't felt the need to get my hair cut, but you know, the world is uh, opening back up, so I probably will actually <laughs> start getting things taken care of. So, anyways, I wanted to explain to you guys something that you're gonna see pop up on my channel, and that is that you're gonna be seeing a couple of new Lost Media Chronicles episodes, and I know, I know a lot of people are gonna think I'm pulling a Doug Walker, oh, the other shows weren't as popular and stuff like that, but no, that, that's not what I'm pulling. What happened is, I thought the Lenny Bruce episode was the 75th episode of the Lost Media Chronicles. And then I actually saw that I was actually only at 73 episodes. And I don't like ending this show on a measly 73 episodes. I want to be able to say that there are 75 episodes of the Lost Media Chronicles. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, what's the point? You've removed a lot of the videos anyways. For me, it's more about the number that I've made than there are the number of episodes floating around there. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, there's been a couple have been taken down due to copyright strikes, uh, which I could easily edit and put back up. I just got to figure out which ones those are again because I've kind of forgotten. And there's been a few that have been removed due to uh, someone I used to date that worked with me on the channel that has since come out as trans and it's just disrespectful to have those videos up with that person displaying themselves as a gender that they don't identify with and also the fact that they just don't want them up and I'm kind of uncomfortable keeping them up with me, you know, not dating that person anymore. There's also a video that was removed due to the collaborator asking me to remove it after a downfall between me and him. And I know that that does disappoint a lot of people, but I do ask out of respect that you don't try to seek those videos out or harass me too much to repost them. I know that there's probably some, you know, big shoegazer fan out there that archived all of my videos and will probably end up sharing them at some point. But the point is you're not going to see those videos return to my channel. Uh, there's also one more, the Red Hot Chili Peppers episode I removed because uh, since its release, I've read Scar Tissue by Anthony Kiedis. And it turns out Anthony Kiedis is a massive pedophile and I just don't want that type of vibe, you know, sitting around on my channel. So yeah, that got removed as well as the Red Hot Chili Peppers videos of Two Beats Plus, but I don't think anybody really misses those in particular. But yeah, there's gonna be a couple more just to be able to say that I made 75 episodes of that show. And I know that Lenny Bruce episode is technically the 73rd, but it's gonna remain numbered as the 75th just because of my monologue at the end of that video. I didn't realize that I was only at 73 until I had finished rendering and uploading the video, and I noticed, oh, Oh shit, I don't have as many LMCs as I thought I did. So you're you're gonna see a couple more if you want a clue as to what the next one is about. Look at the most recent production hell video. By the way, that series is not dead either. Um, I will keep making videos in that series more than happily. I do still find that stuff interesting. If it helps, the next LMC is the result of me receiving a script a paper script that I left with one of my ex-roommates who said, Hey, bro, look what I dug up. 
and it turned out that I was working on this and decided to scrap it because I had too many at the time music related videos on my channel. Haha, <laughs> look at how much music related stuff I have now. I mean, the Creed video has barely gotten any views. I really do encourage you guys to watch it. That was a very research heavy and extensive video. A lot of work and time went into that. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say what the next episode is on. It is about the missing Scott Step slash Creed stuff, including the All-State Arena performance and the missing sex tape between Scott Step and Kid Rock. My views on whether or not that media should be found has definitely changed, especially after doing a lot more research. The original script just did the bare bones stuff researching the media in question, but Scott Step has a very troubled history, and I don't think, out of respect for the growth that he's made as a human being, that it's worth finding this media and that's something I'm going to address that episode's gonna be very heavy because Scott has been through a lot in his life if you've read his memoir you know that he had a very troubled upbringing and my understanding of trauma and addiction and stuff like that and even foolish behavior has changed over the years so that's going to be a very big factor as well anyways outside of that I wanted to share some of the YouTube channels I've recently started following. So let's go ahead and cover some of those. First off is Vosh, who I have been following and watching more than any other YouTuber in recent memory. Now I know Vosh has a lot of controversy surrounding him, mostly regarding some taken out of context clips of him talking about a certain subject material that I don't want to go into debate on here because I just don't feel like getting this video flagged but again it's mostly stuff taken out of context and there's been some things that he's done that he's owned up to and taken responsibility for so that and that's like legitimate responsibility we're not talking James Charles level of pretending to take responsibility but still being terrible uh, behind the scenes at least the stuff Vosh has been cancelled for is stuff that you can be forgiven for and still come back but I do find this man absolutely amazing. He's radicalized me. <laughs> I am now a dirty fucking commie, <laughs> as I'm sure some people are going to refer to me as. And if you have differing political opinions, you know, and that makes it hard for you to continue to follow me, I understand I'm not gonna hate you or get on your ass for wanting to unsubscribe for that. I'm sure most people with differing political views will just kind of let it go considering I'm not a political channel, although I have expressed a few political opinions here and there. Another YouTuber I've been following is e the Illuminati, and she covers a vast majority of uh, business failings and a lot of MLM related stuff. And I was a victim of uh, MLMs uh, when I was younger. When I was 18, I got sucked into Vector, which is uh, Cutco actually, and I hated that experience. So seeing her cover Cutco and then cover all these other MLMs really appealed to me. Now I know also that she is the subject of some controversy too with her kind of mocking smaller YouTubers that have covered similar topics in similar ways even though like I, I don't think she downright copied those other YouTubers but I do disagree with the way that she handled some of those situations even if some of those situations she has resolved and you know taken responsibility for it's still kind of iffy, it makes me question her character a little bit, but outside of that, she's a good content creator, and again, like Vosh, it's not something that she can't be forgiven for, so I, I can kind of brush that to the side and still follow her. But yeah, if you want to laugh at some terrible MLM stuff and be disturbed at how greedy those companies are, I highly suggest checking her out. Um, another one that I've been following in recent memory is Tipster. And I'm a sucker for YouTube drama sometimes, and he's one of the best ones out there. And I'm kind of shocked that he's been around for 10 years and only has 
100,000 subscribers. This guy deserves to be able to make a career out of this. Uh, he has some really good opinions and covers things in really understandable ways, keeps you up to date with all the drama and happenings on in YouTube without taking things too far. I mean, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have even known who EDP 445 was, <laughs> let alone know that EDP 445 is a terrible human being. So is Chet Goldstein, but you know, that's <laughs> that's being beaten into the ground. I don't think you need to hear Shoegazer's take on that, which is nothing unique or controversial. One other one that I've been following is Lindsay Ellis. I've been following her for a while, but it took me a while to actually subscribe. I don't think it's because that I disliked her content. I just think that I didn't realize that I wasn't subscribed to her, and I didn't get to really cover her on my last video that I did on YouTubers that I follow, and Lindsay is awesome and one of my favorite YouTubers because she explains things in a rational fashion without uh, going complete, you know, hard left, super sensitive about these types of things. And I, I really think that she's underrated and got way too much flack with her cancellation. I understand that there are some people that are still iffy about her. I, I think that people blew her cancellation out of proportion. There are some YouTubers that do deserve to be canceled. I do think that James Charles needs to be banned from YouTube. I think that he is way more of a monster than someone like Lindsay is. Lindsay just said a couple of things that upset mostly white people pretending to defend minorities. And that's just, you know, like, let the minority speak for themselves if they take issue with those types of things. And a lot of it was just white people blowing things out of proportion. So yeah, I, I follow her. I've been a fan of hers ever since Change the Channel. I really think that her content is more legitimate critique than Doug Walker could ever muster. And there's also Mike the Snare. Oh my goodness, I have a new favorite music YouTuber. If you're not subscribed to this person and you're into music, check him out. He's like if Anthony Fantano and Scott the Waz had a love child. He has a lot of the not taking himself too seriously bits of Scott while also being able to delve deep into musical analysis like Anthony Fantano which results in somebody that doesn't sound like he has his head shoved up his own ass or that he's stroking his own dick all the time. Very underappreciated YouTuber, and I really hope that he continues to see growth. Definitely jelly about that 100k subscribers. I also would like to point out that I have also unsubscribed from CinemaSins. After a lot of the questionable things I heard about Jeremy, I just was not comfortable continuing to be subscribed to him, and I barely watched any of the videos he pumped out anyway, so good on me. I guess. And I guess that's about it. I'll give you an extra bonus for having sat through to the end of this video. Um, if you want to know what the second LMC is going to be about, I'll give you a clue. It is jazz related, and it's probably one of the most historically important and significant pieces of media that I have ever covered for the show. And I think that it's a fitting final video for me to do, even if it's not the 75th video in the series. So if you can guess what that is down in the comments and you're correct, I'll let you know. Anyways, thanks again for watching. You have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy.